So several of you guys have already asked me, okay, you've got a storage tank underground to collect the air for your power hammer. What are you doing with the condensation? How do you get the condensation out of there? I've said it before and I'll say it again. I don't worry too much about maintenance. That's not a brag, that's a, that's a public admission of culpability. So I've got a little riser that goes down into the tank to the bottom of the tank. It's cut at an angle and the tank is sloped to this end. This valve leaks a little bit, so I put a cap on the end so it's not continually leaking off while I use the thing. Let's see how much has accumulated in there in the last 12 months or so. Ready? Smells good. One gallon. And yeah, you know, that's, that's rusting in there. And it is under pressure. And I'm sure you'll tell me if I'm wrong, but I'm not afraid of that because if it does rust through, when it does rust through, it'll be a pinhole. There's not gonna be a massive structural failure. There's about two, two feet of dirt on that thing and it will just develop a leak. And what I'll notice is that I'm not holding pressure, not that there's an eruption. It's, it's not a steam vessel. It's not being overpowered by the amount of pressure I'm putting in there. And so it'll just begin to leak probably on the lower end of the tank and I'll have to dig it up and replace it. Now, if I'm looking at that incorrectly, I'm open to the conversation, but that is what I think is gonna happen in time. One of you guys asked me the diameter of the Luckenheimer steam whistle that Cy made me. I don't know, let's find out. It's one inch. 753 thousandths, just over an inch and three quarters. It means a lot to me. So I made that. I mean, he made it. He turned every piece. He tuned it, he adjusted it. He used the plans he found online. It's just an elegant little thing. I haven't touched it in the last, what, nine years since he gave it to me. My grandkids love it. But I am gonna put it on a pull chain so even the little ones can operate it. It's easy to bring power into your shop and then later wish you'd brought more in. It's easy to underserve your shop. This is a 200 amp panel. I'm not quite full. A 400 amp panel would have been better because as time goes on, we're gonna to continue to increase the demand in here. It's single phase, but my drill press is three phase. You can often buy really nice manual machine shop tooling in three phase electricity because big shops are usually three phase, and they go for much less than the single phase counterparts that everybody wants in their shop. Because if you don't have three phase, you think, well, I can't use the equipment. Wrong, wrong, wrong. This is, an, this is essentially a three phase motor. I think it's about five horse. This is a bank of capacitors. And when I flip the breaker and send electricity, it begins to spin and generates a third leg. 220 single phase going in, 220 three phase coming out, which I have piped under my slab down to where the drill is. Three phase power. I think that three phase, that rotary three phase generator only cost about 260 bucks. But it enables me to have machine shop grade equipment in what is essentially a homeowner shop on steroids, but still, this old barn didn't have three phase before. So don't be disgusted or disappointed or discouraged if you don't have three phase power in your shop. Get a rotary three phase converter, hook it up, bingo, you're in business.